grew up a settler. Not a knife. <laughs> opportunity for us as a church and the more we have it's just it's good we'll get around quicker but also just going up on Christmas Eve and being able to knock on doors and saying that we're from a church in your community and we're thinking about you and we care for you and here's a little something for Christmas and being able to carol along the way is just it, it will make a difference and people will remember that we should be doing that all year round but especially this time of year it helps people to realize that there's something special about the love of Christ, which is what we're talking about this morning. Um, so that will happen. If you're not wanting to go and do that, we do still have small group. David Giles small group, it's at the end of the hallway, they have coffee there, um, and it'll be an opportunity just to connect and talk more about the scripture and be involved in a small group environment there. So those will be your options there. I think my group, um, my young adult, Seth, asked, told me this morning, he said, he asked if we could be a part of helping to start putting together the luminaries. That's something that a lot of our uh, young people are involved in, and he asked if we could do that as part of our small group. So at least part of that, we'll be doing that. If you want to join us for that, you can too. So there's lots of options. I did not throw out the option of leaving after worship. You, know, you hear that, right? So there's plenty to do. Jump in where you feel like you could um, enjoy the most. But... Um, we do feel like at Christmas time, it's more than just going through the motions. There's opportunities to, to serve and make a difference and be involved in who Christ is this time of year. Um, also, tonight is our Christmas Eve service. That will be at 7 o'clock, and it will be our typical candlelight service. And a lot of people ask what it's going to be like. I want to tell you so that you can tell others. I would encourage you. This is my challenge to you. Um, a lot of times there are people, and I mean this because I've had them ask me, and Randy said that there were people asking on Nelson Knows this week even, where are some places we can go for a Christmas, what everybody's plans are this evening, but God does. So I want you to pray about it and think about it, and I want you to call, invite in person, or text three people. And I'll, I want you to invite them to come and be a part of this evening. And if they come, this is what I want you to do. I want you to meet them when they come in. And I want you to say something to them and let them know that you're glad they're here. People, this is something that could make a difference, not just in their Christmas, but in their relationship with Christ. But just so you know what's going to happen, this is what, if you haven't been here or didn't remember, this is what our service is going to look like. Um, we'll come, we'll have a bunch of Christmas carols that we'll sing, kind of just, just enjoying and reveling in the real Christmas story from Luke 2. There will be a reading of Luke chapter 2. There will be some special music. I will have a brief message, and I mean it, brief. 
And um, then we'll close with silent night and a candlelight. And it's our goal. I'm not making promises, but it's our goal that it'll only last 30 minutes. We do that because we know a lot of times people bring young, ch young children. And people that aren't used to sitting still don't necessarily have as long of an attention span. So not that there's not a lot more to celebrate, but we do that in a way that we hope is meaningful to everyone. So please think seriously, not only about coming back yourself, but inviting other people back this evening as well and being a part of that. Um, I feel like there, is there anything else I'm missing? I feel like there was something else I was supposed to share. Anybody aware of anything else we need to touch base on? I think that's it. And um, I'll ask Bob to lead us in prayer. If everybody would, stand up. <laughs> King, you are King of kings and Lord of lords, Messiah and ruler of all. Yet you came not as a lion, but as a lamb. The greatest gift of all came at first Christmas. It wasn't wrapped in a beautiful package and set under a decorated tree. The greatest gift came wrapped in the flesh of baby Jesus and laid in a manger. Our perfect gift would later be rewrapped in the scars of our sin and nailed to the rugged cross of on Calvary, all because of love. Let us pray. Father, this final week of Advent, fill our hearts and minds with the significance of that truth. Thank you, Lord, for loving us enough to send Jesus. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
favorite part of the whole song is just saying the spirit lead me where my friends is beyond the borders. I mean, that's the most important part of my faith, I think, personally, is how I just trust that God's going to take care of me even when I can't even see past the trouble in front of me. God has always provided, and he's always taken care of me, and I'm so thankful to have a life filled with God. So let's sing it.
There's no other gift greater than what you said concerning Jesus to be a demonstration of how we're supposed to live our life. And it's also to be a sacrifice for our sins. Open our hearts and minds, may I return to you a small portion of the people in us. We say this as to my name. Amen. talking today. Do you remember what this candle represents? What one word you two can definitely what love. It's the love candle today. So love is it just a part of everything in Christmas. This is what I want you to do. This is a gift I got this year, one of my favorites. It's a Christmas tree, but what's inside the Christmas tree? Jesus, what else? Asher? Mary. But y'all y'all get ahead of it. It's the nativity scene. But this is what I want you to do. I want you to do what you just started, what Ryder and Asher just started doing. I want you to name the different things in there, and I'm going to just say something really quick about it. You said Jesus. So Jesus is right there. Jesus is what Christmas is all about. And you probably know John 3.16, for God so loved the world. And then you know the rest of it too. But, but Jesus was sent because of God's love. So that's how love is there. And Ashley, you said Mary, didn't you? Yeah. So Mary is here. Mary was the mother of Jesus. Mamas usually love their children a lot. And Mary was no different. And there are things in the Bible that tell us all about that. Who else is in here? Somebody raise their hand and tell me somebody else is in here. Yeah, let's get somebody else in here. Somebody else. All right, thank you. Are we on? The lamb. All right, the lamb. There's other animals sometimes, and I think the two lambs are the only animals I see here. Sometimes there's cows. Oh, I have one. What? The three wise men. All right, let me get to the animals first, then we'll get to the lamb. <laughs> so the animals. Have you ever heard that animals just have a sense of who the good people are? And animals are just drawn, and if somebody's not good, sometimes a dog in particular, they just they know it. But it seems like the animals, and the, the reason the animals were there too was because Jesus was where the animals were fed. So it makes sense they would be there. But I think it's kind of cool that animals surrounded Jesus too. I think they probably had a sense of something going on, and so there's even somewhat of a, a good relationship there. You said the, the wise men or the magi? Yeah. 
And the ones that gave him gifts. And a lot of times we give gifts at Christmas time, and that's a reflection of how much we care for others. And the wise men did that too. Is there anybody else you think might be up here? Joseph. Joseph. And I'm going to talk about this after you leave, but who was Joseph? Can you tell me? <coughs> tell me who was Joseph. All right, somebody on the national. You're just smart. <laughs> somebody else tell me who Joseph was. All right. Jesus' father. Yes. Jesus' earthly father. Was, he was going to be married to Mary. So Joseph and Mary had a relationship. And I'm going to talk about it. You can ask when you come back because I know most of you are going to be going to your mission adventure. But there was something special between Mary and Joseph that we're going to talk about today too. So I put this here for us to realize that love is an important part of Christmas. And it's not just something that lasts just when we celebrate Christmas, but it's all year through. Okay? Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for, for just Christmas being so close now. But help us to realize that that gift of love is all around us. Help us to realize how much you love us. Help us to, to appreciate each other and our closeness and our family and our church. And Lord, help us to, to love others as well. Those that we may not know very well, but just who you have placed in our lives and in our path. God, we love you and we thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name we pray. You may go to your mission and something up here that I think was probably supposed to be announced and it didn't get announced because my wife wasn't here and I'm not as good at things as my wife is. I want to you to be sure you tell her that next time you see her. I need all the brand points I can get. But I did know this and it was up here so she would remember but I wasn't up here. The Lowesville Women Bible Study Group wants to invite any and all women that want to be a part of it. They're beginning a new study in January. They'll be studying who is the Holy Spirit. It's a transforming study that will reveal who Jesus is, what he does, and what life is like when he lives with you. Learn what the Holy Spirit does in the life of a Christian and how he can help you grow and be more like Christ. They meet each Wednesday at 6 o'clock at the home of Susie Shemp in Lowesville. And you can see Susie for more on that. And I apologize for not getting up sooner, but um, it actually fits with a message. <coughs> <coughs> and so I encourage you to realize where that is. And um, I'm going to begin. Well, before I jump into the scripture, I want to suggest that God just has a way of communicating to us. And here lately, God just affirms things. When I think we're on the right track, I think God helps you see it. When you're not on the right track, I think God kind of nudges you and tries to get you in the right direction. We're talking about what we're supposed to be doing today. We're, we're talking about what God wants us to do today. And the way that God affirmed that to me is through action. Is that true in here or did he go? He went on. Okay. It may be better. Um, but Asher... When they finished singing the song, he went down and hugged every member of his family. I saw that. And I don't know, had he seen you this morning yet? Um, so I, I don't know exactly what it was, except that there's mom there. And so, this boy, who's growing quickly to be the young person God wants him to be, just had a feeling. And he went down and hugged each of those four people. And it was just something that he, nobody told him to do it. In fact, if it had been us, we wouldn't have done it because we were afraid we'd been too embarrassed. We wouldn't have responded to that feeling that was in us. People, that could be the message for the day when we go home. And no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> but that's 
God affirming that love is not just something we talk about in the Christmas story past, but how it's a part of Christmas now. If you would look with me at Matthew chapter 1. And we may be the only church in Nelson County that's not reading from Luke chapter 2 this morning. But I'll explain that. You see, today, what I want to do and what I've been led to just feel is, as we talk about the Christmas story this morning, I want to talk about it from a realistic, relevant, practical view of Christmas. One that really connects with us right here where we are. Maybe hearing some details we don't usually hear. But I want you to know, come back tonight. Tonight is going to be special. We are going to have the story from Luke chapter 2. One of the reasons it's so special is because most of us know it. Most of us have heard it. And as we sit and listen, as we stand and sing carols, it's as though we can be transported back to that first Christmas. And so in the midst of that, it connects that first Christmas with the truth of the love that we have today. I want that to be a gift for you this year. So I just encourage you to be here and be a part of that. So, so this morning we're going to look at something a little bit different. But come back this evening for the Luke chapter 2 experience. Not just the reading of the experience. But for now, Matthew chapter 1 beginning with verse 18. This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law, yet did not want to expose her publicly to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, Son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give his name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. As we look today, I was again just touched and affirmed that we, as Woodland, I believe follow what God wants to, at least attempt to follow what God wants us to on a regular basis, and it fits with the story of Christmas that we're going to share this morning. See, our vision, the vision for women, and if, if you haven't heard that, if you haven't been here, you may not know it, but it's three words. It's up, in, and out. And those three words are all about relationship. And it starts, the first one has to be up. Up is our relationship to God. And in order for anything to be what God intends it to be, in order for anything to have the meaning, the most meaning it can have, what God intends, we have to be in relationship with God. And so we as a church strive to offer those opportunities to connect in that way. And then there's in. And in represents a connection to the body of believers. And we as God's people we're not never intended to go about being who God wants us to be by ourselves. We fall short. We have weaknesses. We struggle. But when we come together, there are ways that we accomplish things together we can't apart. And in the midst of that, when we're weak, there are other parts of the body that lift us up. And when we're strong, we see other parts of the body that are weak. And so we don't have to go and face life alone. God doesn't desire us to do that. And then there's the out. And the out is what is an opportunity for us to, what I call, reach out to the not yet believers. It's not a us and them type of thing. It's not that we've got it together and they don't because we don't have it together. We have to go back to God every single day. And so we're not that different than anybody else except that we have invited God to be a part of our life and we want that to happen to others and so those are the three relationships that we as Woodland are a part of celebrating and I can tell you it wasn't until after I had gone through this and, and just really spent some time seeking what God wanted 
me to share this morning that it clicked for me the connection between these two. But I wanted to share that. So the first one that I share is God's love relationship with us. God's love relationship with us. There's a word that is a very religious word, but I want to share it because I don't know. It, it's important. It, it encapsulates what Christmas is about. The baby Jesus is God incarnate. Incarnate means it's God come to earth in human form. And we're not going to talk about it today, but Jesus was fully God and fully human. And we can get into that theological thing. If you want to talk about it, I'll be happy to do that some other time. But God's love relationship, and you know John 3.16 probably, for God so loved the world, he gave his one and only son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have eternal life. God loved us so much that he came in that way. And when he did that, he didn't just die on the cross, but he came as a baby. Why did he come as a baby? He came as a baby because he wanted to get our attention. And I can tell you, Riley became a part of our life, what, three years ago now? Three, four years ago? From the time we got that little girl, we go anywhere. She always gets the attention first. Even if she's trying to hide, she can be hiding behind one of us. And still, everybody just looks around us. That's the way it is with babies. That's the way it is with those cute little eyes and little hands. It gets attention. And so God knew that about humanity. God sent his son in that way. And, and also those babies are born. God made himself born. The God of the universe. To a point that even in, in that physical body, he actually had to depend on his parents. And it's a picture. It's a connection. I've told you this. I've been asked on more than one occasion, how do we know God is real? And I tell you, that's one of the reasons Jesus came as a baby. That's one of the reasons Jesus came to this earth, because when we talk about God, if that hadn't happened, there's a sense that God's up there and we're separated from God, but God came here with us. And we know that through the scriptures. We know that through the account of the people who lived at that time. And yes, you can still have questions about God and who he is, but the fact that that happened solidifies to a whole different degree the reality of God and Jesus. And then, in the scripture, the name Jesus means Savior. And Jesus was born into this world to save his people from their sins. That's the last verse. That's verse 21 of Matthew chapter 1. And I say this a lot, and I don't think I'll ever stop saying it. God is crazy in love with you and me. And does stuff that makes no sense for God. So that's the first, the God's love relationship with us. That's what Christmas is about. So I hope you see that connection with the baby. Second, love relationship with those closest to us, and particularly other believers. Now, there are those close to us that aren't believers, and that's a whole different scenario, but I'm not going to get into all of that this morning. But I want to talk about being close and connected and having a love relationship with the body of Christ. And I hadn't thought about this until this year, but I want to focus a little bit on Mary and Joseph. You know, we know both of them had a connection to God because God approached Mary and through the angels and asked if she would be willing to be his servant and carry the baby Jesus. And at another time, Joseph was approached by an angel and told that Mary, even though she was pregnant, had not been unfaithful. No, wait for a moment. What is that love relationship like? In my reading of the scripture, Mary agreed 
to carry the Christ child before she ever had a conversation with Joseph about it. And before Joseph knew anything. Now, that it almost sounds just romantic to us and all this because we know the Christmas story. But put yourself in Mary's position for it. Do you know what happened to unwed mothers in this culture? And so, first of all, Mary's dealing with the fact there's this voice, this angel is coming to her and saying, you're about to get pregnant. Even though you haven't had half of you, what she calls you to get pregnant. And she had a hard time believing that. And then she knows something's probably going on. And, and then she agrees to it. But she's not just agreeing to care child. She's agreeing to deal with what the culture of that time is going to place on her. And she didn't know what Joseph was going to do. Joseph was this boy that she loved. They were, well, we don't know that they experienced love in the way we do today because you know what it was typically in this day? Marriages were more about social and economic status than it was about those types of people. So that even brings it to a different place. That makes it even more likely. If he's just doing this because this is supposed to, what reason would he have to stay with me if he thinks I'm going to So, Unless there's something extreme. I mean, even the good guys typically wouldn't have stayed with Mary if she was married. So, there's something there that she agreed to. And then Joseph. Joseph had this angel come to him. What is he supposed to believe? I mean, has he ever heard of a situation like this happening before? To anyone else? It's not like he can go to his, his other... Um, brothers, so to speak, and find out what they did in this situation. No man has ever had happen to them what Joseph's having happened right now. But I believe their relationship was unlike any other couple on the face of the earth. Not only because of what happened with them, but because of their relationship. And because of their relationship to God, they had a different relationship with each other. They could not. It would have been impossible for Mary and Joseph to have the relationship that we know they did were God not a part of it. And so there's a sense there the love relationship with those closest to us. There is a sense of trust. Even though we're different, even though we don't know what another person's thinking, there's a sense of trust in knowing that they're seeking God while we're seeking God. And God's going to bring us to a place that He wants us to be, and it's going to be a good place. People that make so much difference. And we see that in Mary and Joseph. All right, the next one is our love relationship with others. First John chapter 4, verse 10 says this. This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. God's love comes first. We're supposed to love one another. When we recognize who that Christ child is, when we know who God is, we begin to see others. And then when they look at us, they're not just seeing us. They're not seeing what the church. They're seeing something that's different than what the world has to offer. And us being the people that we are, God allows us to be one. And someone told me one time, the biggest compliment I've ever been given when I was preaching is someone said, it's as though you were just a troll. You didn't say very much except allow God to send us. It wasn't about what I did. It was just that God's message came through and people recognized that. And that's what we desire to do for others. Then, the natural love relationship with Jesus. So we had that relationship with God, that relationship with the body, that relationship with others. But then, I want to talk about where we are today, that natural love relationship with God. And I want to go back and, for a minute, just think about Mary. Mary was pregnant. 
with the Christ child. I will never know what it's like, but many of you women know what it's like to be pregnant on his bed. And there's something there that a man will never get. And at least I know that. But it's special. And Mary had that with Jesus. There was a connection there, a love relationship. But there's some other just things there that I think are worth mentioning too. Being pregnant when you're pregnant can be challenging. There's all kinds of things involved, like the morning sickness stuff, just being able to bend over and tie your shoes, just all kinds of crazy things that can be challenging. Well, imagine that you are required to travel approximately 90 miles. That's how far it was from Nazareth to Bethlehem. You're required to travel 90 miles, and you're pregnant. And not only that, you're either walking or traveling on the road. That means it took them probably about four days going about 2.5 miles an hour for eight hours a day in order to get where they were. Yet, we know Mary, in the midst of whatever struggles it was, had a natural love relationship with Christ child. And one of the words, and I invite you to go back and read more about this, in Luke chapter 2, verse 19, it says, Mary treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. Think about what that word treasured meant. And I, I don't think I could describe it in the entire day of what that was going through Mary's head, but I know it was amazing. And so she had that type of relationship that's a natural love relationship. But here's where it comes to us. If you don't have a relationship with God, if you don't have a real relationship with God, I don't mean a churchy relationship. I mean a real relationship. There is a void. There is a natural yearning inside of you that wants to be filled with the Christ child. It's there. I am 100% sure of it. There are many times we try to fill that void with so many other things, but nothing else fits. Nothing. Everything else falls short. And it doesn't mean that you try to fill it with bad things. You can be trying to fill it with the relationship with your family. God gave us a family. Our family's a wonderful. But if your family becomes your God, you know what? That love even begins to be the root of some challenges and struggles in it. Because God is up there to help us be who God wants us to be and see people as God wants us to see them. There are some theologians, some well-known theologians that describe this void, this natural yearning for God. I want to share them with you. The first one is Augustine. He said, you have made us for yourself, O God, and our hearts are restless until they find their rest. And then C.S. Lewis said, if I find in myself a desire which no experience in this world can satisfy, the most probable explanation is that I was made for another world. And then finally, Pascal says, this is a God-shaped vacuum. And there is a God-shaped vacuum in the heart of every man which cannot be filled by any created thing, but only by God, the Creator, made known through Jesus. So people, these aren't Scripture verses, but they're people who study the Scripture so much. And from that and from their lives, they understand that there is a need there is something inside of each one of us that needs to have that love relationship with God that came as the Christ child. That's what Christmas is about. And so, as we continue on the journey towards the birth of Christ, remember to seek God first, realizing you're not in this alone, and that as
as we grow in Christ, we grow in relationship with others. Let's say thank you. I'm going to ask our praise team to come to me. And I'm going to invite you to respond to God for me. This is Christmas. And there's just a lot of good things about Christmas that we can enjoy, and I want you to do that. But I want you to enjoy it to the full. Don't just be satisfied with the lights and the carols and the presents. Do you know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that that empty space, that void, that exists in you, because when your Creator made you, when your Creator made you, He made you in such a way that you yearn for that connection with Him. He doesn't force it, but He wants you to know that He's there. And there are many other things that we try to fill that with, as I mentioned. And sometimes we even try to do the God thing. But we don't really embrace that relationship with God. If we don't have that relationship with God, if that void isn't being filled, make that decision today. Seek God. I'm here to have that conversation with you. Maybe you did seek God, but you've allowed other things to get your attention because that vacuum that's there, it doesn't just get filled once and then everything's okay. We have to continually seek God every day. Maybe you've got to separate it from that. Maybe there are things that have pulled you away and you need to get back to that. If so, seek Him. He's waiting. He has a work for you. He's there. The altar's open. You can come and pray. I would love to pray with you. If you have other decisions, whatever they may be. Maybe you just need to rededicate your life to be in the person you know God wants you to be. Maybe it's a commitment to something you've been running from. Maybe you need to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Whatever it is, respond as God will be. Let's stand together and sing the Lord Jesus.
of the Lord this morning. I felt it and I have looked in the faces of people here. I have seen and experienced the worship with you on there. People who have told me when they're here, they come to me after and say, Greg, this has just been amazing. It's as though God brought me here and God spoke to me specifically. And you know that's a part of being the part of the body of Christ. And we come together and we experience that. But you know what? This, you don't have to be here to know the presence of God. That same presence that you're feeling right now, it helps. It's great to be surrounded with people. And when you're struggling, it helps bring you to the place God wants you to be. But when you leave this place, that same power, that same strength, that same saving grace of who God is goes with you. Unfortunately, a lot of times we just allow the voices that are around us from the world to push in on us when we don't have those around us singing and lifting Christ up. Sometimes it's a little bit more difficult to hear or to recognize, but it isn't gone. God never leaves you. The praise team is going to sing us out. I'm going to be back here, so I don't know nobody's leaving because you got too much stuff to do, too many options, and that's probably not the best one. I'll remind you, you can stay and um, you can hang out. I, um, I don't know. where Anybody know where the carolers are going to convene? All right, in the classroom you usually yeah, meet in? Yeah, yeah. All right, so in the classroom, you go into this hall, take a left. That classroom, that's where the carolers are going to meet. Um, the ones that you typically in my small group will hang out somewhere around my office and be there if you want to be a part of helping get things ready for tonight for the luminaries. If you want to be a part of that small group, remember, maybe you're feeling connected. Maybe there's something there and you aren't ready. You just aren't ready to walk out that door yet because you want to experience more of this. That's what our small groups are about. And there's one of those at the end of this hallway if caroling the luminaries isn't your thing today. But regardless, whenever it is that you step back into the world, that's a mission field. And when we are who God wants us to be, we begin to see those needs of the not yet believers who are very much in the same place we are. And they yearn for what we just experienced as well. And we have a responsibility in sharing with them. So the altar here never closes. I'm going to be back there, but this altar is open. The praise team will place. I come if you need to do that. Speak to me after the service if you want to do that. <coughs> but respond. As God leads. Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for your message. We thank you for who you are and the love that just surrounds us in so many different ways. Thank you for that message that came through the Christ child. And Lord, help us to live the relevance, the reality of that today such that other people see you through us. Not just at Christmas time when we talk about the baby in the manger and when we sing these wonderful carols, but in the way we live every single day of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray.